Hello and welcome to lesson 2.3, using deductive reasoning to verify conjectures. Today's objective will be to apply the law of detachment and the law of syllogism in logical reasoning. Please take a moment or two to answer the warm-up questions. Alright, in the first two we are supposed to underline the hypothesis and double underline the conclusion. Number one, a mapping that is a reflection is a type of transformation. We could word this. If a mapping is a reflection, then it is a type of transformation. So our hypothesis is the first part of the sentence. A mapping is a, that is a reflection. Then the conclusion would have to be is a type of reflection of transformation, rather. Number two, the quotient of two negative numbers is positive. This is a little more difficult to word as an if-then statement. But if we did, it might sound something like this. If two numbers are negative, then their quotient is positive. So our hypothesis is actually in the middle, two negative numbers. The conclusion is split between the quotient is positive. Lastly, number three, we need to determine the truth value of this conditional statement. If it's false, we need to give a counterexample. If x is a number, is the hypothesis. That means x could represent any number. Then the absolute value of x is greater than zero. Greater than zero means positive only. Well, I can think of one number that would make this false. There's only one number. If x is zero, if x equals zero, zero is a number, the absolute value of x does not is not a number that is greater than zero, it is equal to zero. And so this is our one counterexample, so this is false with that counterexample. Let's begin today's lesson. We are going to study deductive reasoning in this lesson. Inductive reasoning, if you'll remember, is the process of reasoning that a rule or statement is true because specific cases are true. However, deductive reasoning is the process of using logic to draw conclusions from given facts, definitions, and properties. So the difference between these two is that inductive reasoning uses specific cases and examples, or counterexamples. Deductive reasoning, however, uses mathematical facts, definitions, and properties in geometry. So in example one, we are to figure out if this is inductive or deductive. There is a myth that you can balance an egg on its end only on the spring equinox. A person was able to balance an egg on July 8th, September 21st, and December 19th. Therefore, this myth is false. These are all dates other than the spring equinox, and they are observations, specific cases, when our statement was false, or counterexamples. Therefore, this is using inductive reasoning. Part B. There's a myth that the Great Wall of China is the only man-made object visible from the moon. The Great Wall is barely visible in photographs taken from 180 miles above Earth, and the moon is about 237,000 miles from Earth, a much greater distance. Therefore, the myth cannot be true. This conclusion is based on the fact that is given here and here. So this is a use of deductive reasoning. Let's take a look at our first law. The law of detachment states if we have a true conditional statement, if P then Q, if that is a true statement, and the hypothesis is true or satisfied, then the conclusion is true. So this is a case where we are given a conditional statement and given a true or satisfied hypothesis, well then we can arrive at the logical conclusion to be true. So let's see if these statements use that law correctly. We are not trying to figure out if the statement in the conjecture blank is true or false, but whether or not it is a good use of this law, valid or not valid, that's what that means. So for part A, we are given the side lengths of a triangle to be 5 centimeters, 12 centimeters, and 13 centimeters. If that's true, then the area of the triangle is 30 centimeters. That is a conditional statement. We are also given that the area of a specific triangle is 30 centimeters. The conjecture we arrive at is that the lengths of the sides of triangle PQR are 5, 12, and 13 centimeters. 
This takes our law of syllogism and tries to apply it in reverse. Okay, we are saying that because this is true and our conclusion is true, then our hypothesis must have been true. And while that might be a true statement, it is not a valid use of the law of detachment. So we are going to state that this is not valid. Part B. In the World Series, if a team wins four games, then the team wins the series. The Red Sox won four games in 2004 in that World Series. So our conjecture is that the Red Sox won the 2004 World Series. This takes a conditional statement, which is true. If the, world, if the team wins four games, then it wins the series. And we start with a team that did win four games. We are starting with a true hypothesis then we can arrive at the conclusion. This is a valid use of the law of detachment. So next we have the law of syllogism. In this law we are given two conditional statements that are related. If, if P then Q, and if Q then R are true statements. Let's look at that before we move on. These conditional statements share a statement, Q. We take the conclusion of the first conditional and we make it the hypothesis of a second conditional. So if that chain of logic is true then we can say the original hypothesis gets us to our final conclusion. If P then R would be a true statement. We can kind of skip over this middle part and explain that if our first hypothesis is true then our final conclusion is true. So let's see if we can apply that correctly. Here's the first statement we are given. If a figure is a kite, then it is a quadrilateral. Then if a figure is a quadrilateral, then it is a polygon. So we have this chain of logic. We start with a figure being a kite, then say it's a quadrilateral. Then we apply that conclusion as a hypothesis in the next statement. If a figure is a quadrilateral, then it is a polygon. So the conjecture says our original hypothesis, if a figure is a kite, leads us to our final conclusion. It is a polygon. This is a valid use of the law of syllogism. Part B. If a number is divisible by 2, then it is even. If a number is even, then it is an integer. The law of syllogism would allow us to start with our original hypothesis and arrive at our final conclusion. However, the conjecture tries to do that backwards. We start with our final conclusion as a hypothesis, and then we go all the way back to our original hypothesis as a conclusion. Again, applying this law in reverse does not work. This is not valid. In part C, if an animal is a mammal, then it has hair. If an animal is a dog, then it is a mammal. Now, these two statements don't seem like they're connected until you put them in a different order. What if we read this one first? If an animal is a dog, then it is a mammal. If an animal is a mammal, then it has hair. We have the common statement of something being a mammal. So that is the part that they have in common. We take this conclusion and make it a hypothesis in this statement. So if I go from this original hypothesis, even though it's written secondly, I'm thinking of this as the start of that chain of logic. If an animal is a dog, and I go to my final conclusion in the chain of logic, then it has hair. That is a valid use of the law of syllogism. And we have one final example where we will get to make our own conjectures. Allow me to clear this off. Okay, here is what we have been given. If 2y equals 4, then z equals negative 1. If x plus 3 equals 12, then 2y equals 4. And we are given this statement. That is our given start to this chain of logic. Well, you'll notice I've rewritten these in a different order. It helps to rearrange the statement sometimes. If x plus 3 equals 12, then 2y equals 4. If 2y equals 4, then z equals negative 1. You can even see what would happen if we overlap that common statement. They cover up and it fits quite nicely. So we are starting with this given piece of information then our conclusion, our conjecture that we make, our final conclusion can be that z equals negative 1.
because we are starting with the beginning of the chain of logic and we arrive at the final part of the chain. Part B, if the sum of the measures of two angles is 180 degrees, then the angles are supplementary. If two angles are supplementary, then they are not angles of a triangle. We are given these two angle measures. A measures 135 degrees, B measures 45 degrees. If I check those two to see if they add up to 180, that would start the chain. 135 plus 45 does equal 180 degrees. So I can go to the next part, that they are supplementary angles. Once I know they're supplementary, I can also say they are not angles of a triangle. All three angles of a triangle have to add up to 180, so if these two are already 180, the third angle would have to be 0. So I can arrive at the final conclusion that angle A and angle B are not angles in a triangle. And that is our conclusion we can arrive at. Well, I hope you've been able to understand the laws of syllogism and law of detachment a little bit better, and feel free to ask any remaining questions you have in class. Thank you for your time.